just a few tips about starting a virtual camp program. Um, first and for foremost, check with your insurance company. Like you should do this before you start any kind of activity or program. Make sure that they can answer any concerns or questions you might have. They might have concerns and questions. So make sure that your programs or activities that you want to start are covered by your insurance. They'll bring up things that you might not even think of as far as liability. Um, the other thing is our best and promising practice in camping and youth programming still, still apply in this setting. Um, so you're gonna wanna make sure you're training your staff and your volunteers, anyone that's gonna be a part of virtual camp programming, you still wanna hold a volunteer orientation and a volunteer training for those things. Uh, you still wanna adhere to working with youth practices. So rule of three still applies. We're still mandated reporters if those are laws in your state. So um, you are literally in people's homes right now um, through virtual programming. So be aware of that. Um, additionally, all of our camps have outcomes. If you don't have outcomes, um, this is a time to kind of frame those outcomes that your programs are working towards um, and still framing those things in virtual camp setting is really helpful when developing programs. Um, you wanna make sure you're registering people for this. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be as intensive as a traditional camp setting, but you do wanna get consent. You wanna be able to adapt your programming because there's gonna be different ability levels um, kids with diagnosis might uh, need special adaption, adaptation of their programming, and it helps with programming. So if you're planning for 10 people to show up for a session and there ends up being 20, it's a little hard to scale up in a moment in a virtual setting, whereas if you have an idea of the number of campers, it's easier to scale up beforehand or scale down. Um, if your camp had issues, for example, if you are hounding people to register for programming um, before the pandemic started, those issues are still gonna be there. So thinking about how you're going to address existing issues that were there before a pandemic will help you in creating that value proposition and being a salesperson for your camp participants. And the last thing, make sure you practice your sessions before you go live with it. You'll find out a lot of stuff by failing in a session with your peers. And you might wanna include a camper or two in your session too, because they will give you the realest feedback possible. And then you can go and expand that programming and scale up to whatever you have in mind. Um, those are my tips. Um, I'm gonna pass it over to Jack and Clee and I'm going to manage the chat box. So continue asking your questions making comments, and we'll make sure Jack and Clee get around to that. Um, thank you all for being here, and we're going to get this thing started. What's going on, everybody? Whoa, I love seeing everybody's face. That's so fun. Look at that. Um, okay, first things first, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes I'm a little too much. If you don't know me yet, um, I can be a little loud. I can be a little obnoxious, but I think that a lot of times on Zoom, Zoom can be a little too stale for me. So Sometimes I might be a little extra on Zoom. I apologize. We're going for it. Um, Klee and I are really excited to be here. When Don reached out to me to talk about virtual programming with y'all, I was really excited to have a chance to lend some mostly crash test dummy learnings from us trying to kind of launch this. Uh, we're entering our fifth week of running about six hours of programming a day for kids on what we call hometown stomping. Um, and we've learned a lot and we've made a lot of mistakes. So we want to come from this kind of like leading learners perspective of we are, there's no experts in this because it's, it's there, there hasn't been time for anyone to have 10,000 hours of doing this. Uh, but we've started and we're going to try and give you some understanding of what we do. And so we run a, a little nonprofit camp in upstate New York that's transitioned to running virtual programming uh, now. How many of y'all um, have seen anything, like know anything about who I am? I've done some webinars with COCA before. If you do, cool, then we're just gonna move forward and 
if you want to know more about us, you can go to campstompingground.org and there's all kinds of stuff. Anyway, um, Don reached out and said, hey, Jack, remember, you're an engineer. Remember the words, hello world. And when you start learning any programming, what you learn how to do, like if you do programming with computers, you learn how to make something that just says, hello world. And he's like, Jack, the thing is, none of us have done this before. We need to start from the very, very, very beginning. So this may be a little bit basic. I apologize. If you're listening to the recording later, you can fast forward. If you're like, I get it. I know how Zoom works. Um, but we're going to start from that perspective of so many of us are doing this for the first time. We, we don't know what this will look like. And then you add on to the fact that kids are going to be involved, that it's going to be exciting and weird. And that's the part I love about running camp is that it's exciting and weird. And the hard part is that now we're doing it on the computer. It's not, some of that doesn't quite translate, right? Um, so I want to say for us, when we think about running virtual programming, what we're talking about is thinking about what is it about Stomping Ground that we care enough about to be able to bring to kids virtually and what actually translates. So tons of stuff doesn't, right? Like, I don't know how to play capture the flag on Zoom and we play capture the flag at camp. That's not gonna happen on Zoom. We can't really have campfires, but maybe we could. That's like one of these question marks, right? So like Aston said, thinking about outcomes, I wanna start from that perspective of what is it that your camp is uniquely suited to be awesome at for kids and how can we bring that virtual? Um, for us, we think that we can be a space for kids to be interactive and um, have a chance to talk to other kids that they don't, you know, that aren't their best friends because they don't you know, necessarily know them or they only see them at camp or those kind of things and interact with grownups who like actually care about them outside their family. And for so many kids, they're not getting any of that. Uh, and there's, you probably have seen people like Dax Shepard and Kristen Bell have launched a version of online camp. How many people have seen that? It's basically like, um, like live Instagram, live Facebook, that kind of stuff. And that's awesome. I, I think that's really cool. I can't, we can't compete with the production quality that they're going to come out with. We can't compete with the fact that they're the most famous people, you know, around. Um, but what we can do is that interactive piece because when they, when kids go on to, to that, they don't get to actually talk to Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell doesn't actually like, isn't actually like, dude, Ian, that was a cool idea. And Ian gets to go, whoa, like a grown up cares about me, which is what you do every summer at camp, right? That's like what we get to do during the summer. And so for us, we're thinking about how can we do that kind of thing online? And it's not perfect. And I will admit that if I had the choice of safely bringing our campers to camp and getting to all be together in the sun or sitting and looking at a computer and talking to, to kids, I would absolutely choose option one, that is run what I think of as regular camp. And I think a lot of you are probably feeling the same way, like, is it worth it to do all this work to get kids online when it's just not the same? And I buy that. I don't think it's the same, but I think that we can, I think camp is good, first of all. And I think some camp is better than no camp. And for us right now, some camp means going online. And that's weird because normally we aren't encouraging kids to be in front of screens and there's a lot of stuff going on like that. Um, so this is just kind of like my pep talk saying, I get it that it's weird. This thing is strange that we're, what we're doing. And I think it's worth it because some is better than none. Um, so what we want to do basically for the rest of the time, and we're going to try and keep this relatively short because if you're like me, you've been on way too many Zoom calls where you listen to people and you didn't get a chance to talk or ask questions. And so we're going to keep it relatively short so we can do questions as quickly as possible. Also, if you have questions in the middle, feel free to just unmute yourself and ask them or put them in the chat and ask them. We'll make sure that Clee and I um, kind of respond to them. Um, but what we're going to do in a second is we're going to let Clee take over and lead what we would do in one hour. Um, and we'll condense that into, you know, 15, 20 minutes of 
how to run Pictionary online. And the idea is that if we all can be a little bit like, okay, I can see how to do one tiny bit of programming online, hopefully we can all start building some little building blocks and taking those Legos and building the castle that might be your version of virtual camp programming. So you can go to, to hometownstompingground.org, which is our free virtual camp programming that we're offering. You can look at kind of the scale that we've gotten to. Um, and we'll talk over the next four or five weeks, I can't remember what our, our schedule is, um, three, four weeks, about lots of where we can go with virtual camp. Um, and there's a lot to talk about from behavior management to uh, how to set it up, how to, um, whether it's worth doing this or that. There's a ton to look into. Um, and we can, we'll, we'll start talking about what we're learning and how that's worked. I know Ian's got me scheduled to do uh, a teen, you know, how to interact with teens in a few weeks. That stuff's really important. It's really useful. And it doesn't make any sense unless we can all agree like that this is possible. So what we want to pitch to you is what is one activity that you could run that you could go out and test this week, next week, where you send an email out to your families and say, hey, we're going to try to run an, an interactive activity next Thursday at 4 p.m. Come, then you can do it, you can try it, see how it works, and then iterate from there and say, actually, what Klee said, that didn't quite work. We need to do this a little bit. I have some more questions about this. But because we're inventing this as we go, it's the most important that we get a little bit of practice doing it. Um, so this may seem a little bit rudimentary to some of you, and it might seem like totally wild, like I can't believe that we're going to play Pictionary over the internet to others of you. Um, and that's cool. Um, I will say uh, two more things. Aston talked about internet safety. Uh, I think that that is a, something that's really stressful for us to think about, making sure that, that kids are safe. It's a really interesting, we weird time where we're starting to normalize kids being online a little more, interacting with grownups online a little bit more. And that's really awesome for the awesome things that we want to do. And it's scary because it means that there's more opportunities for uh, folks who have malicious intent to potentially um, start to target some of our campers. And that's something that scares me. Klee, will you post in the chat the video you made with Nat? Um, we made, this is a beginning of, of us starting to address this issue with our families. Uh, we, so we made this video that you can take a look at that is essentially a starting point for grownups in kids' lives, so their parents, their caregivers, to start to talk to them about best ways to keep themselves safe. Um, and we partnered, you can use the video that please, you can use it for your purposes, use it for whatever you want, um, copy it. Uh, I should have said this from the beginning. Anything we say, just use it for everything. Steal direct language from our website if it's useful to you. Um, just do anything you can to make your kids have the best summer possible. Um, and we, we don't need any credit or copyright or any of those things. Um, so starting there, and then the second thing is um, that getting a little bit comfortable with Zoom. We use Zoom, you might use Google Hangouts or uh, you can use any number of video chats. Spending a little bit of time to get yourself comfortable being on these platforms will go an incredibly long way. Um, and Klee's gonna talk in a second about kind of some facilitation tips for being on Zoom and then jump into leading Pictionary. But um, if you can practice a little bit with being on Zoom, it's definitely worth it and it'll go a long way for kind of understanding how to work with kids on Zoom because you're gonna, it's like uh, anything at camp. If you've done it a couple times, it's easier. Many of you are probably awesome at Zoom already. I love that. Um, Klee, will you give us three facilitation tips that you've learned from running the five weeks of Zoom camp that we've run and then uh, lead us in a little bit of Pictionary. And again, if anybody has any questions at any time, just jump in. We love to be um, interrupted. Uh, that's, that's great. Nice. 
All right. So Wait, Klee, um, Klee, I forgot. I forgot. Klee. Who are you again? Hi, everyone. I am Klee. Um, one at Summer Ground calls me, um, and I'm the camp director for Stop the Ground. Um, so I will go through the, we came up with three facilitation tips, like Jack said, um, that I came up with after messing up a bunch and learning a bunch from our online call. Um, so the first thing we found out is that, and that's been super helpful for us, is having two facilitators on all calls. Um, so that's two staff. One of them we refer to as the performer, and the other we refer to as the host. So the host is um, the Zoom host. So they're maybe muting people if kids have audio and don't realize it, turning off video for any reason. They're doing actually some of the technical stuff on Zoom and getting the call started. Um, and then the what we're referring to the staff member who's the performer, they um, are the person actually leading the activity. So if I'm the host on our Zoom calls, the way I structure it is I run the entire intro, I come with um, a prompt for kids to share their names, and then one fun thing, we'll do this all together during Pictionary when we do it in a couple minutes. Um, and then after I've done my intro, set some expectations, help kids with any technical stuff, I say, um, all right, Jack, I'm gonna turn it over to you now and you could get started with Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and then Jack can take it from there. Um, and encouraging your host, whether it's you or another staff member, to really support Jack in uh, checking in with kids throughout the call. So we do a lot of thumb scale check-ins on our calls as hosts to say, um, especially if Jack is teaching a skill like baking or dancing, um, he might not notice as well as I can as the person not leading the activity if kids are a little behind. So it sounds like um, thumbs up if you're feeling good. I feel okay. Thumbs down if you're really confused and you're not sure what's happening. Second tip for um, speaking again to hosts is owning the room and, and keep it moving, we like to say. So um, really, again, like I said, if you're the host or someone else, empowering them to um, interject if needed um, and keep the conversation moving. So I think that took me a little bit to get used to on Zoom. You're doing it in different ways than you would in person at camp. Um, it can seem like a little bit more um, forward. And when nobody's in charge of a Zoom, it can be confusing or kids are just going to talk over each other. So um, own the room and keep it moving. And then our last tip is um, the point of these calls is interaction, not perfect production. So Jack kind of talked about this when he mentioned um, Kristen Bell and Dex Shepard's um, virtual online camp um, as, or online programming. Um, as camps, we can offer more than sit and get. Um, so we don't have as beautiful of content, um, but we can do those one-on-one -on -one connections like uh, Jack mentioned. So those are um, a ton of tips, but those are three that we have found to be the most important in running our calls. Deb's asking, if we had more kids, would we add more hosts? What we have done, and Don's gonna get mad at me because it's leading to more complicated stuff. Sorry, Don, the questions are here. We're gonna answer them. Um, but uh, if we had more, um, as our kids, if we've, as we've had more kids, we've added more time offerings, which has then spread out the load of when the kids have come, which has make, kept our, our kind of ratios um, relatively low um, of around, you know, 10 to 20 kids on the, the bigger calls. Some of the calls are, are much smaller and only have uh, a couple of kids. Um, let's, this is a great time for a pause, though. We're about to, Klee's about to tell us how to run Pictionary. and normally we don't have 52 kids which is what we have here so when you do Pictionary maybe um, we won't uh, do everyone but I, I do I think it would be great to have some people kind of um, jump in because then we can see what that looks like um, on most of our calls again we have between 10 and 20 kids in the uh, in the bigger sessions um, and 
Yes. Does anybody have any other questions right now before we jump into Pictionary? How often are we doing programming? We, at the moment, we are running programming Monday to Friday, um, six hours-ish a day, um, which is a lot. And I'm not saying that that's the right answer for everyone. I want to kind of acknowledge our privilege as a small um, nonprofit that just runs summer camp, that we were able to pivot all of our energy and two full-time staff members' time into this. So we, you know, that may or may not be possible for many of you. Um, and yes, Leanne, you can go to hometownstompingground.org and there will be an Aston's right now. I can see him. He's grabbing the link. Um, he, uh, he, and it'll have the, uh, the, our schedule uh, as we use it. Any other questions? Let's do, if there's two more questions, we'll do those before Pictionary. Nope, no questions. It's like we're in, uh, what's the, what the, the um, come on, Brady Bunch. That's the one I was looking for. Uh, all right. Um, Clee, I hear, do it. I hear you're running Pictionary today. What's good? All right. So I'm going to be um, leading this exactly from a lesson plan we made up, and um, we're going to send that to you all as well. So I'll follow that exactly and um, it outlines like exactly how I would run it. Um, so welcome everybody. Thanks for coming to Online Pictionary. Uh, so happy to see you all here. Um, before we get into the game, let's first start with introducing ourselves. We'll share our names. And um, if you were an animal for one day, what kind of animal would you want to be? So I'll go first because it's my question. And to avoid all of us talking at once, um, we're going to popcorn. So I'll share, I'll send it to somebody else and please stay on mute until it's your turn to share. Um, so I'm Clee and if I were, um, if I got to choose an animal I'd wanna be for one day, I would choose a turtle. That's, that's my pick for today. Um, all right, Jack, will you go next? We'll just do one share and then I'll keep moving. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Clee. Yes, I would be, my name's Jack, and I would be a hawk because I'm trying to fly around, dude. Um, do you want me to call on someone now, Clee? Um, I think for the amount of people we have, we won't have time to go through everyone, right? I think we won't have time to, to go through everyone, but do you want to do a couple just so people can see sure. what that yeah. kind of looks like? If, if you haven't had a chance to go, will you raise your hand? Nice. I know that nobody's had a chance to go. Nice. That was a trick. Jake, Jake, will you tell us, please? Yes, uh, I'm Jake. I'm from Dream Down Cape Cod. I would 100% be an otter because they're fun and playful and they hold hands when they sleep. And that's really awesome. Uh, so now I get to nominate someone else. All right. Uh, Anne from Camp Sunshine, you're up. Hey, everyone. I'm Anne from Camp Sunshine. I would be a dolphin. I'd love to splash around and do some jumping in, in the warm waters, if I could. And I will call on Dina. Dina is a little quiet. I don't know if that's just on my end. Um, sometimes when this happens with, with our campers, I have them, um, put their answer in the chat if they want to share. Well, as Dina puts it in the, in the chat, um, Emily, will you fill in Emily Jeffries? Hi, I'm Emily. I'm from Camp Good Days. And what? Oh yeah. <laughs> and Rochester, Rochester represent. Let's go. You're like very close to Clee right now. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm in Buffalo right now, but um, I would be a dog. Fair so, enough. so we tend to have, we tend to have people call on folks at the beginning like this to keep it moving a little bit and take the center of attention a little bit off of the facilitator. Um, just like you might do at camp 
in a variety of other settings like this. Um, and we wanted to have to go through a couple of these so you can see kind of what it feels like. It's a little bit awkward and that's okay. And also, um, you know, sometimes there are situations like we ran into with Dina and uh, it's okay to also, as the facilitator, jump in to help navigate those because kids and staff, I think, sit in these kind of settings and go, uh, what, what, who's in charge? What do I do? And so as the host, as the performer, kind of owning that stage kind of maybe even more than you would normally goes a long way. And Clee, back to Pictionary. Jack, Alrighty. Clee, can I make, whoops, can I make a quick comment? I'm sorry. If your sure. video is on, you are always on. So right now you are the spotlight of the show. So keep that in mind when you're in a room with kids, because if you make a grouch face, they're gonna read into it really far. It's not like at camp where you might have a perspective and kids might catch a look of you. No, they have direct contact with you right now. So be on all the time when the camera's on. Nice, that is true. Um, all right, so after we do the introduction, um, then I would say thanks everybody for sharing um, with our campers. We always say that they can pass if they want. Most campers want to share. Um, so for Pictionary today, I'm going to tell you how it's going to work. I'll go first and then I'll pass it to somebody else. Um, I also say during Pictionary that unlike on this call with about 50 people, I'll say with our campers, um, before we hang up, everybody will get to drum because um, that's a lot more doable and they'll want to know that ahead of time. Um, so what I'm going to do to go first is at the bottom of my screen, share, and then I'm going to click whiteboard for all of you. Um, you all will, I'll set a timer for one minute. You all will get to guess um, what I'm drawing and then whoever guesses it first wins the round and gets a point. So I'm opening my whiteboard right now and I'm about to draw. So setting the timer and for this, you uh, don't have to put it in the chat, just go off mute if you have a guess of what I'm drawing. All right, here I go. Ice cream cone. Yes. Gosh, all they needed was a triangle. Amazing. Who was that? Michelle, is that me? The ice cream cone? Yes, Michelle, you get a point. Yay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> congrats. Michelle, do you want to draw one? Uh, I'll try. I've never done the whiteboard piece before. Okay. So, yes. Where do I go? So, at the bottom of your screen, this is a great example then, um, click, do you see the button that says share? Um, no. Should be next to, um, oh, got it. Uh -huh. for me at the bottom. It's next yep, to got it. Okay, we'll great. Whiteboard. And then whiteboard. And then you will be able to click um, the little like Crayon button looks like you already have it. You can tell us whenever you're ready and we can all guess as you draw. Okay. Sunglasses. Skateboard? Car? Car. <laughs> Car is nice. it. And then, to, um, and then you would click stop sharing at the top of your screen. Uh. Where do I do that? Is that oh, it? Oh, great, you did it. Okay. Nice job. Um, let's do, does anybody else want to do one more drawing? You can um, just start your whiteboard if you'd like. Do you know what's so funny about kids and adults? When doing this with kids, <laughs> there's never one moment where any like there's a chance that you go does anyone want to and someone doesn't go i'll do it um 
And that's why we all like working with kids because we're all like a little bit like, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't want to, who do I? Uh, but wait a minute, Clea, I know somebody that'll do it for us though. All right. Ian, you knew I was going to call on you, didn't you? I'm lost. Here's my no, that's cool. So if you, Ian, if you click stop sharing, there it is. Boom. Hey. Okay. Am I good to go? You're good to go. Whenever you're ready. A, and, and Ian, make it a little bit of a challenging one for us. Oh, of course. Dinosaur egg. Fishbowl. Gumball. Gumball. Yes, gumballs. Gumball machine. Nah, um, kind of, but not gumballs. Candy machine. No, no candy thing. Off the candy. It's not really helping, I feel like. Like a, a bouncy ball just back there? Should I just say what it is? No, no, no. no. You have to keep drawing. Okay. Uh, we got this. We, got uh, this. Mm. we need some more guesses, though. Come on, everybody. Igloo. <laughs> Bag of money. Pot of gold. Uh, a lamp. A pot of honey? No, no. Typewriter. <laughs> No. And uh, utilize colors at that Yeah, I'm trying to get to the color. <laughs> Cake with sprinkles on top. No. No. This is Lollipop. so fun. Um, <laughs> is, it a, is it one of those dispensers that you put your, your quarter in and, and have things come out of? Is it a bag of oranges? Cheese balls. Yes, cheese balls. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. The orange really did it for us. Thank you. No problem. I would never have thought of that. That was so good. Um, all right, great. Well, let's, let's pretend that everybody got a chance to go. Um, so uh, thank you, everybody, for playing. Before we sign off, I would love if we could close by again popcorning and sharing um, one thing we're doing to keep busy or um, activities that are fun to do from home. Um, so one thing I've been doing a little bit more of while having more time at home is um, going on more walks than usual because uh, it feels good to get outside. Um, MJ, do you want to go next? Then pass it to a couple other people. Wow, thank you so much. Um, recently, to stay busy, I have been learning how to juggle with clementines. It's not going well. <laughs> um, Leah McComb, would you like to go next? I would love to. Just, we're going with it. We're, everyone, we're going with it. So I think it's a popsicle. Paintbrush. No. Acorn. No. Slurpee. The sword in the stone. Gardening. Cricket paddle. Draw. Bubble wand. Nail polish. Your nail polish. Yay! I want MJ. Mm, we'll have to review the tapes. <laughs> nice. So, so sometimes, sometimes that happens, and the options are you can uh, keep going, or um, or you can interrupt. And I say in that situation, it was worth it to just keep going. Um, right. If we were like really crunched for time, then I might like stop the person sharing and say, oh, we're, we're actually doing the closing at the closing now, um, but we'll do Pictionary again. But that was great. 
Um, well, thanks, Clee, for, for running Pictionary for us. Um, yeah, I'm glad that we had a chance to do some of it because I could tell from the beginning of the call through now already there's a few more smiling faces than the beginning where it was like a little bit more like uh, stilted and um, like, well, what are we doing here? Um, and I think that that happens with kids too. They arrive and at first they're a little like, is this just a sit and get? Do I have to do what I'm told too much? And as they have a chance to be a little bit more interactive, which as far as I've seen, they're not getting a ton of interaction, even from the kids that we have that go to schools that are doing a lot of Zooming. It's still like mostly the teachers kind of like standing and st sitting in the front of the room, which that's not always true, but that, that is what I'm seeing. I'm here, we're hearing from our families is that um, their schools, even if they're Zooming, are doing a lot of kind of like not, not a ton of interaction. And so that's where I think we, back to the, the point is where we're, we're trying to be. Um, so Aston, I'd like to move into questions, but if, do you have anything you want to kind of um, say before we get to that? Yeah, I was gonna cover a couple of Zoom tips, if that's okay. Um, first, um, the question in the chat box was, have you used individual classrooms for groups? What size would you recommend using classrooms instead of staying in one group? Can you pre-assign people to classrooms or is it arbitrary? Great questions. So I'm gonna take one step back before we take two steps forward. One is I am in no way endorsed by Zoom at all, but there are a few reasons why we're using Zoom. One is there's a lot of integration between Zoom and the education system in the country. So a lot of kids are familiar with Zoom and Zoom is a great um, platform that you can upload to a phone so you can have apps or you can use it on a desktop, um, laptop. Um, so even when kids might not have a laptop, they might have access to a cell phone and you're still able to use uh, very close to the same capacity that you have um, on the laptop or desktop version. Um, if you are a member of TechSoup or you're not a member of it and want to be, it is discounted um, hardware and software for nonprofit organizations. They have highly discounted Zoom um, fees right now. So check that out. I'll drop the link in the chat box in just a moment. Um, but getting back to the um, question about breaking a larger group out, you can definitely do that. Um, it depends on the version of Zoom that you have. We have a paid version, which allows us to go over the hour mark, and we can go as long as we want to. Um, it also allows us to do some extra features. One of those is like pre-assigning breakout rooms. What I would recommend doing is waiting until you see the participants you have in your big room, and then you can pre-assign people. It allows you to click participants. You're gonna have to prep a little bit. So this is uh, why it is beneficial to have someone that is handling tech and someone who is the performer, because that person handling tech can pre-assign a lot of um, what that looks like. Um, and you can have as little as two people or one person in a room. Um, and that helps when you're doing some kind of activity where you wanna send one person out and bring them back in if it's like a guessing game or something like that. Um, the other thing is you can do cabin chats that way as well, but still you wanna have rule of three, make sure you have two hosts in each of those breakout rooms that are adults so they can facilitate the process. Um, and the other thing is, oh man, I, I don't know, here we go. We'll do that a different time. So someone asked if we could just do the breakout room right now. I'm afraid that we won't bring everybody back. Um, so let's not do that right now, but maybe in another session we can uh, give that a whirl. Um, now we'll move on to any question and answers you guys might have. So don't be shy. You can type any questions or comments in the chat box. 
or just unmute yourself to ask those questions. Um, I just have a quick question about specifically about cabin chat or reflection or however you all use that like end of the day reflection. Um, do you have plans to or are you doing any kind of reflections broaching the topic of the coronavirus and all those types of feelings that might come up, especially for our kiddos with that? And if so, do you have prompts or suggestions specific to like different age groups and how you should or shouldn't? you know, broach that topic? We have done a little bit and it comes up, as you can imagine, it comes up like, you know, just things as simple as like, how are you um, keeping yourself busy while you're at home? You know, like it's the topic of the world. We, this weekend, like four days from now, we are running our first, um, we're, we, we're trying a teen virtual retreat so it'll be like pretty continuous programming Friday to Sunday for teens. And we are going to do May 6th. We're going to do a, a kind of debrief on how that went and lessons learned from that with um, Ian is Ian, your background's incredible, by the way, uh, with, with, um, with that. And in that we are doing some more kind of facilitated deeper discussions around what it looks like to be 15, 16 and living in this kind of new world. Um, but I think a, I, I love the idea of creating more prompt materials as a community here around how do you talk with kids over Zoom about that kind of thing, um, which uh, I think we could definitely dive into more as we, as we move forward. We don't, we don't have a lot of specific stuff developed right now. Jack, I wanted to add something on to your comment. Um, one thing to consider is because we do have a lot of difficult conversations at camp at times, um, at the very least having um, a psychosocial licensed person on call um, because you are going to have things that bubble up at times. And um, if you have the capacity to deal with that, that'll be great. But some of us don't. So have that person on standby when you're having programming. So you do have that resource available because anything that is on video, anything that is on a call, we're gonna need to deal with and making sure you have a plan in place to deal with those things. Um, Jennifer brought up a good thing point in the chat about backgrounds and what's appropriate. Um, I use a blind for my background um, because it's not distracting, but it's like a clear, clean slate for people to show. You can do virtual backgrounds and you wanna set that expectation for campers too, because they don't wanna, you don't want anything inappropriate to come up on their background. So, and you can stop their virtual background share um, as a host on Zoom. So if you see something, you're gonna need to take that, that action. You can easily stop videos and pull kids out into a breakout room to have a discussion about what uh, what's happened and address those things. Um, the other thing is use what you have. Some of the best practices are having like lighting in front of you. Sorry if this blinds anybody, but I have a desk lamp that I use that adds extra lighting to me. Um, so my face comes out a little clearer. If you have like lighting it behind you, it makes it harder for people to focus on your face. Or if you have a fan going in the background, it can be like a dizzy effect for people. So just consider what your video looks like to other people when you're going through this. Thanks. Thanks, Aston. Um, we got a question, family game night, family activities on, on Zoom. We haven't done, done much of that. Uh, I want to be cognizant of what Don keeps telling me, which is don't get too deep too fast. Um, and uh, so what I'll say is if you haven't had a chance to try some form of virtual programming, I encourage you to try Pictionary or try uh, some, you know, you can, there's a lot of games that you can run. And if you need help brainstorming, you can email us or Aston and we can kind of think through some stuff, but try something 
so that you have a data point for what you want to do going forward. And um, it doesn't need to be long. It can be a half an hour. It can be an hour. It can have grownups and kids. It can have just kids. It can be just with your staff and your volunteers. Um, but I, I would push you to try just, just one time to see what it's like so that you can, instead of building, trying to build a castle, but you're not, you've never played with the bricks before, um, you know, it gives you a, a place to start and a, a little bit more comfort. Because I think when you try it, you'll realize that it's weird and kind of different, but it isn't so, it isn't so hard. And that people will laugh and joke around and smile and that you'll be like, oh, okay, there is a little bit of camp here and it's different, but it's, it's still camp. It's still people caring about each other. It's still people laughing with each other. And we, we can't necessarily all come together, but this is better than nothing. And then there's some cool opportunities to start finding what's special about being online and what is what are the better parts of being online? And and there are some like we normally just don't have a magic whiteboard that we can uh, like instantly have appear without doing anything. You know, we can. There's videos you can watch. There's, anyway, there's there's a lot of interesting opportunities when we take a deep breath and have a little bit of chance to play with stuff. Um, and with that, I Jake, I would like to answer your question. <laughs> If we have to jump off, I can. No, no, no. Uh, lots of time. I'm just kind. Don told me don't go too fast. That's what he. he and mm -hmm. so I'm. Uh, I'm being. I'm trying to stick with Don here. For sure. No, I just. I guess I have a question about opening and closing of the week. Um, my camp is a is a one week uh, summer camp experience for children and families. So we have a opening campfire and a closing campfire, and obviously campfire is pretty key to a lot of summer camp experience. So I was wondering if you guys have any traditions or any virtual start to the week kind of kickoffs or end of the week kind of wrap ups? Awesome question. The, Klee, go ahead. Um, I was gonna share Mondays we do, uh, Monday mornings we do the tradition that we do at Stomping Ground called Tell Me Something Good. At camp what it looks like is all together in person, all of camp, um, uh, two people, um, usually Jack and somebody else, lead us in a song um or, or not a song we say to him it's not that good and then we call on kids to say like something they're feeling good about and we started doing that on zoom and while we noticed a lower attendance in a lot of other daily options kids really love that they get to do that tradition um on zoom so um that's definitely one that's been good for us um jack what were you going to say uh, and then we have done just kind of gratitude circles um and they they're pretty easy to facilitate on zoom the i think that the question that we're wrestling with is how do we bring the parts of camp that make stomping ground stomping ground virtual and that's really tricky and we aren't perfect at it and we're learning every day and i hope a year from now we're going to all have a thousand really cool ideas that we tried and you know, three of them will have worked. Um, but things like, you know, making, tell me something good virtual and it's not the same and it's like kind of awkward, but it is, that's like a piece of our programming that kids who have been to our programming are like, Oh yeah, I remember that. Um, we've done some sign offs. We, um, we do something at Stomping Ground where we cross our, our arms like this and we say it's good to be together three times at the end of every night of camp. Um, and we've done that with some of our calls. And again, it's like really weird and awkward to be like on a video call, like trying to have your fingertips touch the person next, you know, like, but it's like, again, it's not the same, but it's fun to do that in a way that lets kids like smile and have a memory from camp. Um, we, so, what can we do to bring stomping ground to kids? Whether that's, you know, some, uh, we have our mascot is a newt. So can we have some little newt drawings that kids can, you know, that kids can see, or um, are there kind of totems or, or, or pieces of camp that 
are in everyday programming at camp, but we almost take for granted because they are so easy at camp. And can we do a little work to bring them to the kids on Zoom? Because, because there's nothing else going on, like kids are stuck in their houses, every little piece that we can bring is worth it. Um, so that, yeah, I guess that, that, that's what I would say. I don't have like the best, we don't have, it's so much of the special part of sitting around a campfire is the actual campfire and the view of the lake or the view of the mountains or what have you that we don't exactly have. But could we make a quick video of what that looks like? You know, could one of us go to camp? Some of you can do this with your rental agreement. Some of you can't, I'm sure. And have a video of the fire crackling and um, something in the background that we could all, because you could, you know, I could share that video right now. We could all watch that mm -hmm. and then chime in. So what are some of those things? That's, that's what we're playing with. And, and I, we're developing and, and we'll develop with you, but I, I will have more conversation about that kind of coming up on, on some, especially the, um, this, how to bring a ceremony to life at camp. Because I, I know, you know, my niece is graduating from high school this year and she's very sad that she's not going to get to, you know, walk across the stage and have that moment. And I'm imagining many of your kids are kind of in a similar boat where they don't get to have their last summer at camp or they don't get to do the ribbon ceremony or, you know, the, all those kind of things. How, how do we bring those to life without kind of making them too cheesy? Because then they lose their power. Um, Aston asked me to speak on the, or speak about our registration process. Um, how it looks for hometown stomping ground is um, you go to our website and I'm going to send the link if you want to look at um, exactly how parents register their campers, but I get an email um, with um, a notification that a camper is registered and then I send a follow-up email saying welcome to hometown stomping ground and I give them the password that they need to access um, the Zoom information on our website. So they get the password and then it lets them know if they want to sign up for what we call week-long activities. They email me again and let me know um, specifically which activities and so they get special links for that as well. But in short, register online and I follow up with parents. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, there's a couple of comments in the box that I thought would be helpful to highlight. One is reaching out to your insurance carrier again. Um, Susie said that um, at Okazu, they've called their insurance agent and she said they would absolutely, they should absolutely do a waiver for virtual programming. And the insurance agent is actually going to help develop one. Um, the other option is to reach out to your camp management system if you're utilizing one and ask them for some guidance in a, for a way to adapt your registration system that you're currently using um, for virtual programming because a lot of you should have existing waivers and being able to adapt those to accommodate for virtual programming might uh, help you from not having to recreate something that you already have. Well, we will be back next week, same time, with um, kind of a, a, a next step on what we're seeing and how to be useful. Please send uh, questions, thoughts, comments, concerns, worries to Aston, and we will kind of compile all those to try and make sure we're covering what you all feel like you need to be able to be successful um, running virtual programming this summer or during the, the rest of the year. Um, we're all learning this together. It's never been done before. And so uh, it's an exciting time, I think. And I'm excited about the opportunities that'll come from this uh, around what can we do maybe when we can really run camp during the year, but we can do virtual meetups once a month or for kids. I know many of you have, have former campers or potential campers who might be in the hospital and wouldn't be able to attend camp. 
could we make some kind of virtual programming that's kind of tailored for them in the future? I think that there's some exciting opportunities here as well as kind of some stressful, how do we make all this work um, kind of situations. So um, thank you all so much for, for having us and letting us, uh, letting us play Pictionary with you today.